Hello, my name is Scott Hoyer. Um, today we're going to do a little video on repairing the piston loader valve for the RTA 100 ton compressor. Um, we're going to be working on a 400 ton tiller, a RTA 400. Um, we're going to show you all the techniques that we use, um, the process uh, of sucking all the gas out, and actually doing a repair job on the compressor. Uh, should be fun. Alright guys, so here we are. We're underneath the 400 ton chiller. Uh, we've already taken the gas out of the compressors, uh, but since this is a tandem circuit, what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you what I did. Uh, first, we pulled the gas out from the high side, which is right there, your discharge side of the compressor and the suction side of the compressor. To do that, we shut the shutoff valve on the discharge, which is right there. Then we closed the oil. I don't know if you can see it. We went ahead and closed the oil service valve. And then what I like to do is I like to put a little magnet solenoid puller on the oil um, line in. And what that does, it allows me to pull from one circuit or from one compressor and it pulls both compressors at the same time. It does that through an equalizing line. If you can see it right there, there's an equalizing line that comes up, actually goes above the um, solenoid and then we'll go all the way over to the, the other chiller and it's allowing me to go ahead and pull all the gas out while only being hooked to one side. All right, so the next thing after you get all the gas out, we brought all the gas down to 2 PSI. Uh, then we went ahead and started disconnecting some bolts. Uh, with this one being the tandem compressor, you have to lift, lift the discharge up so that you can get to the front plate of your compressor. All right, so what we did there is we just put a ratchet strap over this um, beam right here and we just lifted it up. You want to make sure that you have good clearance to the front of your compressor. Uh, make it real easy to get the gasket off later and it's just you know room to work with. We've done it on both sides. So how you do that is you just go ahead and you take out the head bolts. Uh, make sure that you test your charge. Make sure you're at zero or two PSI. We did that and then we just went ahead and backed out our bolts and we went ahead and lifted the discharge uh, line of the compressor. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the end cap off of the um, 100 ton compressor and we'll uh, go from there. All right, so you're going to take the front of the compressor off with a 15 16 bolt. All the bolts on the front of the compressor are 15 16 um, Before you go any farther, before you break the system out, you want to make sure you have all your parts. Um, so the parts that we're going to be using today is this piston kit 00115 this is the actual piston just gonna have the lip seal around it all right and then you're gonna use part number GKT 03229 and that's going to be the gasket for your head plate all right another thing you want to use is to make sure you get your part number RNG 01410 and that's going to be the gasket that goes right here for your discharge all right so you don't want to really open this up till you got all the parts because you don't want to let it sit overnight so it's real good to have your parts break it open do the repair put it back together and then pull it under a vacuum all right so let's, let's go ahead and open this thing up Another good thing, make sure you have a spot where you can put all your little bolts so you don't lose any.
So now what I like to do this little uh, I'm gonna call it a head um, plate is a little bit heavy. It's not real heavy. You could probably handle it, but you're not gonna be able to handle it in the gun at the same time. So what I like to do is just barely crack the last bolt. A small crack, create a hinge point, and then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take this one out and you'll see the head plate fall down nice and easy and slow. After you break the seal. Here in the front is you have your discharge port of the compressor. You're gonna have your piston cavity right here and your two rotors are gonna be right here. Uh, what you wanna do is, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this piston out and I'll show you how we do that in just a second. Excuse me. Yeah, like I say, it's not real heavy, but it's a little awkward to deal with. Make sure you save all your bolts. Alright, so this is going to be the same size as your bolts are, which is five. 15, 15 16. 16th. We'll put it in there, get it on the bolt. Now you're just going to ease it. Uh, this bolt is connected to the slide valve. So if you snap the bolt, you break the slide valve, it's a bad day. So you just want to ease it. Alright, so we got lucky. Bolt didn't break. There's the bolt. What you want to do then? You can take one of your long bolts that came out of your discharge, you're going to screw it on there just a little bit, and you're going to screw it onto the front bolt that you just took the nut off of and pull it out. Alright, so that is how the compressor loads and unloads right there. Alright, so the cavity right here is sucked in through the suction pressure of the unit when the cool is energized, which allows the unit to unload. When you want it to load, the solenoid energizes, putting discharge pressure behind the cavity, pushing the loader up in a turn that makes that moves the slide valve up and across the rotors like that. Alright, so once you get it out as far as you can, about right there, save your nut. You take a little hammer, and you're just gonna tap it. The slide valve's gonna move back. And you're gonna grab a hold of it. Might need to go in a little bit more. And you pull it out. Alright. And that is the loader right there. Now this is a lip seal right here. Now this particular one was not unloading correctly. It started up pretty loaded so it was letting refrigerant leak past. So this is bad. We'll do away with that. And then this right here, if you look down in there, this is the slide valve. Right here. That's the slide valve. She's a little sticky. It needs to work. Not too bad though. Back and forth over the piston wall. Alright. So, next thing you want to do, you can take new piston out. Very important, make sure you know which way it goes. Little seal first. What I like to do is just get some oil on it. Rub on them gaskets. Slides real good. I'll put some in the wall. The wall's pretty good. Light on it. Luckily, light on the top. 
Alright, so let them seal first. And they are a little tight going in. The trick is though, you don't want to push the slide valve in with it. Alright, so we're going to go back to our bolt. You can see how the slide valve's just sticking through just a little bit. Screw our bolt back on there. Go pull it all the way out. Alright, so now that's all the way out. Start the thread. Alright. Now you'll watch the slide valve pull up on it. See that pulled up on it. Good there. What I do is I just tighten it just enough where the piston starts to move just a little bit. The first side of any movement I stop. And then there you go. Alright. So that is replacing the low piston with the lip seal. If you can notice somebody's already done the lip seal bypass kit. Uh, why that wasn't working for this, I don't know. I guess we were leaking past too much. Um, but it was unable to fix it. Next thing you want to do, and probably not going to show all this, but what we're going to do is we're going to pull all this gasket off. And then we're going to put our new gasket on there. We have it in hand right now. And we're going to put the bolts back in there. And that's her. Uh, if you have any questions on how to replace the piston loading or the loading piston uh, give me a call um, it's pretty easy as you can tell it's not real hard you just want to make sure all the gas is out of the unit um, definitely want to make sure that you don't snap your inner rod it goes to the slide valve um, I've never done it I guess I can see that you can do it but I mean, you have to really be messing up. I think the only way you could do it maybe is with the torque, with a breaker bar or something. I don't know if you know a little half-inch gun is going to give enough to snap that. It looks like it's almost a half-inch rod going through there, so I don't know if that will happen or not. Um, also, don't forget to replace your seal, and uh, that's that's how you do it. Um, we'll film it putting it back together real fast but this is going to take some time to get all this gasket material off so like i say if you have any questions give us a call